Hey everybody, this is Mr. Wolf. We're back with another video for Unit 6. Today, we are going to be talking about secants and tangents. You guys may have heard of these at some point in time. We're going to give definitions to each and some properties surrounding such. So let's just jump into it. First, we're going to talk about secant or secant line. So you can call this either secant or, or secant line. I've always called them secant lines, uh, so it doesn't matter which one you use to me, uh, as long as you know that word, secant. Now let's look at this picture and try to figure out what exactly a secant line is. We have this line here that goes through two points on the circle, and that's exactly what a secant line is. So a secant line is a straight line that crosses through exactly two points on a circle. So at these two points, we'll call them A and B, this secant line intersects on the circle. If it's one point, that's something else. We'll talk about that later. And if it was three points, well, I think it'd be quite impressive if you could draw me a straight line that intersected a circle three times. So exactly two points uh, that a line passes through and that line is a secant line. Uh, one thing I like to say here is it's kind of like a chord. It's not exactly like a chord, but it, it's kind of like a chord because you can see the AB here, that line segment. If you take off this portion and this portion here, that would be a chord. It goes through two points or it's a line segment that has both endpoints on the circle. So it is part of a chord, but it's important to know that a secant line goes past the circle in this direction and in this direction. You can have a secant that is a line segment, but your points would be something like this out here. And you will see those, but, uh, but most of the time it will be a line. So when you think of these, think kind of like a chord, but bigger in a sense. You may be asking yourself, what if we have two secants, something along the lines of this, where this one comes out and goes in that direction. It creates an angle there. Let's look at this. Here's an example of one of those angles, and we call this a secant-secant angle. Why do you think we call it a secant-secant angle? Because it's made up of one, two secant lines. Uh, and that's a pattern you'll see with the angles we talk about today. They're named after exactly what they are. So a secant-secant angle is an angle created by two secants. So any angle created by two secants is a secant secant angle. And you'll see here that we have a couple intercepted arcs with this secant secant angle here. And there's some properties for such, but when you do this, think back to the other uh, stuff we've done with angles and arcs. We've worked with central angles. We know that central angles uh, measure exactly to their intercepted arc. And then there are inscribed angles, which measure half of their intercepted arc. So there is uh, a formula, a property, a theorem of sorts here called the secant, secant theorem that will give us this information. And the secant, secant theorem says that a secant, secant angle will measure one half the difference of the intercepted arcs. Let's think about what this means and how we could write this down uh, as a formula as opposed to just a definition. So let's name our points. Let's say we have point A here and point B here, point C here and point D here, and we'll call this one E back here. So a secant secant angle, in this case our angle is AEB, so angle AEB. is going to measure, or will be equal to, 
one half of the difference of the intercepted arcs. So what's difference? Difference means the result of subtraction, right? So we know we need to subtract these two arcs. So we'll say AB minus CD. And we need one half of that. To get one half of something, you can just divide it by two. So there is our formula for angle AEB. You would take arc AB minus arc CD and divide that by two. Let's do a couple examples here. So in this case, we have an angle, a secant secant angle, by the name of ACE. That's what we want to look for here. We need angle ACE. What would this be equal to? Let's write down what information we have as well. We do have arc BD. We know that that is equal to 25 degrees. And we have arc AE, which is going to be equal to 125 degrees. So I think we have everything we need here. So from the last slide, using that formula, we can say that ACE is going to be equal to 125 degrees, because that's our AE arc, minus 25 degrees, because that is our BD arc, divided by 2. And then all we do here is we do the subtraction. 125 minus 25 is going to be 100. So we have 100 degrees divided by 2, and then we're left with 50 degrees. So we can conclude that angle ACE equals 50 degrees. Not too bad. Make sure you copy this one down, though, because you will see examples like this where I give you a secant-secant angle and the arc measures and say, what is the measure of that secant-secant angle? But we can't forget this other example we have here because this is a different style of example that you will run into as well. Here we have... Oops. Here we have the measurement for ACE already, we'll say, line. So we know that ACE is already equal to 36 degrees. And then we have AE, but we don't have or arc uh, BD. So we have arc AE is equal to 148 degrees, but we don't have arc BD. That's what we want here. That's what we're looking for. So we know... Um, using the same formula, we can just kind of plug these things in. So we say that 148 degrees minus arc BD divided by 2 is going to equal 36 degrees. And here we just need to get to a position to where we can find something that is equal to arc BD. The first step we take is try to get rid of that 2 on bottom, and you can do that by multiplying both sides of the equal sign by 2. So we can say that 148 degrees minus arc BD's measure is going to equal 36 degrees times 2. And then from here, there's only a couple more steps. Um, I'll write out what I would do next, and then I'm going to let you guys work this one out in your notes. This is just for me to, to know that you guys are paying full attention and understanding what we do here. Uh, don't worry about I mean, making everything right. If you're to this point, I'm confident you guys can finish it. Uh, do not stress over this. Let's go with ahead with our next, next step. 148 degrees subtracted from both sides. We'd be left with negative BD equals 36 degrees times 2 minus 148 degrees. So my question to you guys for your notes is what is the measure of arc BD? And I feel like each and every one of you have the abilities to solve this. All you have to really remember when it, when it comes down to it is the formula here, how we set this up. So let's review one time. We'll go back to this slide. A secant secant angle is an angle created by two secants. And the secant secant theorem says that a secant secant angle will measure exactly one half of the difference of the intercepted arcs. And then we wrote this out over here to the side on exactly what that means and what that will look like. Let's move on to tangent, the other part, portion of this, of this lesson. So let's start off the same way we did with secants. Let's look at this and see what it looks like and then pull some information from it. To me, this looks like a line that intersects the circle at one point. It looks like it's just touching that little point there and that's it. And that is exactly fine, a tangent or a tangent line. You can call it a tangent, a tangent line, either one is fine. So a tangent line is a line that intersects a circle exactly 
one point. Remember, if it intersected at two points, it would be a secant line. So a tangent line is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. There is something important about this point that I'd like to make note of. We'll call it A in this instance. Uh, but there is something we could call point A that would be a little bit more specific as to what we were talking about. So, the point at which tangent line meets a circle known as the point of tangency. So if I gave you this circle with this tangent line and that point there and I said what is the point of tangency on this circle? You could say that the point of tangency is equal to point A, or is point A. We'll, we'll replace that equal sign. Is. So the point of tangency is point A here. Uh, and if we had another tangent line, oops, that would have been a secant line. If we had another tangent line like this, we have this point here, we'll call this one F. Then our point of tangency for this one would no longer be A, it would be F. So those are some big things to pull from this. Tangents are a line that intersect a point, or intersect, intersect a circle at a single point. Uh, and the point at which a tangent line meets the circle is known as the point of tangency. Let's clear all this out. There's a little bit more here we want to cover about tangent lines uh, before we finish up. Tangent lines have a lot, actually, uh, that you guys will, will need to know. So make sure you're pausing the video at any time you need and making sure you're getting all those notes down. If you need anything additional on top of this video in the notes, make sure and let me or Mr. Rose know. Uh, but there's some other stuff we want to talk about here. Uh, one important property, an important fact, uh, I'll put a star beside it, very important, is that the radius that shares, I guess we could say, any radius. There, there could be multiple. Any radius that shares a point with a tangent line will be perpendicular. that tangent line. Let's get a visual for this. So if we had our center point somewhere here, we'll call it C, and we had a radius that comes out, and I know that's not the straightest line in the world, and it shares this point up here, we'll call it A. You could say that the radius is equal to AC, and since it shares a point with our line of or our tangent line we'll call this a d e knowing these things you can say that ac is perpendicular to d e but what does perpendicular mean this is a good review for you guys perpendicular means that they intersect at a 90 degree angle so if you had a tangent line down here and our ra a radius came down and shared a point with it, this would be 90 degree angle as well. So let's read that one more time. Any radius that shares a point with a tangent will be perpendicular to that tangent line. Very, very, very important. We only have a couple of more things here to review about tangent lines before I let you guys get to finishing up those notes and working on any other assignments. So, what if we had, let's say, a cord comes across the circle like this, 
and shares a point with that tangent line. There's an angle here. From there to there, we have that angle. And what we call these angles are tangent chord angles. So let's repeat that. Anytime you have an angle that is created by a chord and a tangent line, we call that a tangent chord angle. Tangent chord angle. So we have one here. Uh, what can we do with this? What we, can we figure out? Well, I'll tell you what. Every time I give you guys an angle when it comes to circles like this, there's going to be some way of figuring out that angle's measure. And there's actually a pretty easy way to do this on this one. Uh, so you can see that this chord here alone brings about this giant arc, this what looks to be a semicircle there. So the measure of our angle here, we'll call this A, we'll call this B, we'll have a point up here we call C. So we want to find the measure of angle A, B, C. What would that be? So the measure of a tangent chord angle is going to be equal to the intercepted arc divided by 2. So in this case, our intercepted arc is arc BA. So we have arc BA. We want to divide that by 2. So you can plug in numbers here and get different things for whatever it may be, but we want to remember that a tangent chord angle, you can find the measure of it, by getting the measure of the intercepted arc and dividing it by two. So let's say that this is a 180 degree arc. In that case, we could say, well, 180 degrees divided by two, we have a 90 degree tangent chord angle. So ABC would equal 90 degrees. Hope that makes sense. That's, a, that's one you just have to commit to memory. Uh, there's no quick way of, of really memorize it just from looking at the paper, uh, but you'll see that it, it kind of makes sense as far as the way the angle looks, the measure it should be, and what you get. Clear all this stuff off real quick. So what if two tangents form an angle? So we have two tangents. We'll use this one as an example. Let's say we have another tangent line coming this way. They share this point. Actually, let me uh, I'll use the line tool. It's actually, something like that. Ends down through here. I didn't do exactly what I wanted to. Something like, boom, okay. And they share this point. So there's an angle. Oh, quite a big angle here created by those two tangents. What do you guys think we would call it? Believe it or not, we would call it a tangent tangent angle. So a tangent angle angle is created by two tangents. A. So in this case, the vertex is here. We'll call this A, as I like to call angles. And we have this tangent, tangent, angle. So what can we say about this tangent, tangent, angle? Well, there's been a routine here. If we look back to secants and secant angles, we said, well, you subtract the you get the difference of the intercepted arcs and you divide by two when it came to the tangent chord angle you said well you take the arc it intercepts and you divide that by two and that's how you get that and there's kind of a similar pattern here and that is that a tangent tangent angle is found by getting half of different of intercepted arcs. So it's the same thing. Half of the difference of the intercepted arcs. You take the intercepted arcs, subtract them, and then divide that by two. Let's do an example. 
So I, I want to clarify one thing. This example I gave here is somewhat of a rare example compared to what you'll see. Uh, that angle's huge, and they meet on the same point of tangency. Most of the examples you run into will look like this, and this is the one we'll use uh, to do an exact example of something you can expect. So we have this tangent-tangent angle here. We have angle A, B, C. And we said that in order to get A, B, C, we needed the difference of the intercepted arcs uh, let's throw point out here quick. And we need to divide that by 2. So what we're looking for is arc A, D, C minus arc A, C divided by 2. So let's just throw in some measurements here. We'll say that arc A, C equals 100 degrees and arc A, D, C. Well, let me ask you this. If arc A, C equals 100 degrees, and that is our minor arc here, formed from a central angle, then what would ADC equal? And you may have a question like this where you have to solve these kinds of things. So think about what you have to do. You would have to take 360 degrees minus 100 degrees, and you would end up with 260 degrees. Remember, when you have a minor and major arc, you can use that minor arc to find the measure of the major or the major to find the minor by subtracting from 360. So now we know that AC equals, or arc AC equals 100 degrees and ADC equals 260 degrees. So we can say that 260 degrees minus 100 degrees divided by 2 is going to equal angle we're looking for ABC. So 260 minus 100 is 160 degrees. We have to divide that by 2, and that would equal 80 degrees. So angle ABC equals 80 degrees. And that's stuff that you'll run into. So I would honestly take a second to practice this example down. Uh, watch it through the video and then write it down. Maybe change the numbers around because you will see these on worksheets, activities, and obviously the test at the end of the unit. But let's go back through and just cover over everything we did again just to make sure we didn't overlook anything. So a secant or secant line is a straight line that crosses through exactly two points on the circle. It's kind of like a chord except it extends past the circle on both sides. If two secants intersect, they create what is called a secant-secant angle. A secant-secant angle has a great theorem that comes with it called the secant-secant theorem that says that the measure of that angle will be half the difference of the intercepted arcs. So you take the intercepted arcs, subtract them, and divide by 2, and we did some examples of that right here. Seems like my recording's a little bit behind. Sorry about that, guys. We'll let it get caught up here before we move on. So we move on to tangent. A tangent tangent angle so well first of all we'll say a tangent or a tangent line is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point they're pretty easy to identify because they look like these ones that kind of come outside the circle um, like nope that's a bad example like this so you'll have those and they are exactly half of the difference of the intercepted arcs how do we get that you look right here at this example we have these two tangent lines that intersect creating a tangent tangent angle we have two intercepted arcs AC and ADC we subtract those and divide by two to get our answer I just noticed that the video has been a tad bit laggy if that has affected anything throughout I'll make sure and rewatch it uh, to make sure it's not too bad but if, if you missed anything or need anything make sure to reach out uh, thank you guys for watching this far into the video I know these videos seem to be getting longer and longer but this is very important stuff uh, make sure to rewatch the video if you missed anything. If you need anything else, reach out. I believe I already said that. Um, and make sure to stay on top of it, guys. We're getting close to that test. We're not too far off.